Let's talk about hand planting buried seedlings in open and forested settings. We've got our tools. It's gonna really come down to what you got laying around. There's a wide range of ways to put these things in the ground, but the concepts are the same. The big thing to keep in mind is how deep are these tools gonna get you in the soil? So when you get these tree seedlings, they're gonna have a wide range of root extents. So it is absolutely critical that those roots lay freely in that hole that you're making. So you really gotta match up your root extent with your tool extent. You don't want them doing this, that's called J-rooting. Troy does not approve of that, no, no, no. Now see, that's getting pretty wide. You don't want them circling. You don't want to cram them in there like that, so you got to consider that when you're selecting your tool and asking yourself, do we want to root prune these? So you really want the roots to lay as naturally as possible. So here's my dibble bar, also called a planting bar. Now check out this root system. Is that going to fit in there? No. You want to clip as, as minimally as you can, but the key thing is to have that root system fit naturally in the hole you're going to make. These are the fine roots. These are the things that suck up the goodies, the water, and nutrients dissolved in the water. And those also you want to be careful about not J-rooting, not circling. You want them to hang nicely in that hole. So a little snip here and there. If you have to get too aggressive with root pruning, you need a bigger tool. Ooh, that looks pretty darn good right there. A couple clips and prune as minimal as you can to get that seedling to fit. Troy approves. This is very important. This is the root flare or collar. This is where the seedling was growing in the nursery. You can identify that by the swelling, also the color change at the base. That is your target. That's where the surface of the ground should meet the seedling. Here's the dibble bar. So this tool, the dibble bar, basically makes a V-shaped hole. Let's see, no pressure, Troy. Here we go. Troy's gonna do the three-stroke method here. Dibble, dibble. All right. Way too short of a tool. So we gotta clip this thing. I'm watching my root flare, my root collar, the color change, boom, perfect with the surface of the soil. Troy's gonna backfill this. And that's another critical thing is soil root contact. You don't want any air gaps in there. No air gaps to dry out those roots. You want it nice and snug. One down, 15,000 to go. Dibble, dibble. Seedling goes in, it's a little tall. Making a clean cut is more important than angling or having a, an angle to the pruning cut there. You don't want it ripped or shredded. Dibble, dibble. Roop. Oh my gosh, that is way too deep. And this is gonna set the seedling off for a disaster in the future if it's too deep like that. Troy wasn't watching the root flare there. And I was not either. Its roots are already below a zone of good oxygen, so it's just not gonna be a, a vibrant, uh, vigorous seedling. <laughs> We're just faking it here to show way too deep planting. A little housekeeping there. So the tools may vary, but the concepts are the same. You want the root system to hang freely. You want the root collar or the flare to be at the appropriate depth. And you want a really nice soil root contact to prevent drying out. So it really depends on what you got handy and what you're willing to spend all day maneuvering. This is why site prep is so important. Ooh, look at that soil. It's gonna fall right nicely around the root system. Look at that, perfect. Get some nice soil root contact. You don't wanna super compact it, but a little compaction is good. The larger shovel, you're gonna have a lot more material to, to replace back in the hole. Little snug right there. Boom. You also notice this thing is straight up and down as best as we can make it. Something like this, eh, you might want to correct it a little bit, if possible, without damaging the, the root or the stem, making it a little bit upright and a little bit of compaction on one side. Boom. This is the speediest way. Not many folks have access to these things, but you can even use a, a hand drill for this. Watch it with the drill there, Troy. The thing with the auger is you really gotta watch your depth because it's really easy to go too deep, especially if we're all excited here about planting trees. And the hole's gonna be a little bit smaller than manual equipment, so you may have to kind of fit the roots in there. That looks a little too deep. What I'm gonna do here is pull it up a little bit as I pack it around, 
and we'll be good to go. That's a good example right there of the root flare. Boom. I feel like I'm doing all the work here. So this thing's got a heck of a root system on it. And if I didn't want to prune excessively, we're going to do this swirling around technique here. That's a lot of root system you're packing into that small hole. Let's rotate that thing around. We got a good diameter increase. A lot of times that action of the auger can make a glaze or compacted soil on the walls of that hole. And I scarify or kind of just bust up the wall so those little fine roots can get a grip and spread out. This is really important in soils with heavy clay. We're back in the woods. Excellent. So a little bit different. Same basic concepts, but we've got a completely different system. We've got different obstructions here. Depending on the species you're planting, you want to look up and see if that species is going to get enough sunlight where you're putting it in the ground. So as opposed to infield planting, these are not going to be in perfect rows. They're going to be scattered. They may be clumped up at points. Remove competing vegetation. Somehow I lost my shovel. We've got the emergency shovel out of the truck. Same deal, proper depth. Good soil root contact. Root system's too big, I'm gonna expand this hole. This is a woodland soil, probably doesn't need this, but what the heck, I'm out here so those roots can get a grip. I'm the world's slowest hole digger. So this concept's kind of the same as the open field. The main difference between the infield and open field is placement, clearing away existing vegetation, you know, making sure the species, if it needs sun, so looking for gaps in the canopy. Another thing to look out for is any kind of existing vegetation in the woodlands and just making sure that it's not going to be overly competitive, the seedling that you're going to place in that selected spot. I'm making a pizza here. Perfectionist mush? 20 minutes later. Boom. Right depth. So in these woodland settings, use the topography and any kind of material on the ground to your advantage. So while not completely protecting from deer, planting within this down top could, to some extent, prevent deer browse and deer damage. Anything you can do to make it less accessible to those animals. You can control a lot with hand planting. You can control your species, your spacing, the stock you get, the seed source you get, uh, the genetics. You just have to make sure they're planting at the right depth and the roots have a chance to grow properly and expand. Boom. So hand planting seedlings, whether in open or forested settings, help you control the species mix and spacing of your future forest. Planting bare root seedlings in open and wooded settings will seed you in your seedling woods.